In your defense, your daughter is to, literally as we speak is over the Atlantic. Headed, With some man I don't know. A man? The pilot. Well, that's sexist. I'm sorry. I was about to say. I'm sorry. I'm glad you said it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Cooper's Hawk. Cooper's Hawk. And this here is Frank. You know what? He's been wearing this jacket a lot. But guess what? He can't stop because it ain't about Hawks. It's about Eagles. It's about the, the, the Philadelphia, Philadelphia Eagles. Philadelphia Eagles. They can't stop winning. Really? They won again? They won again. 11 and 1. Did they ever have this, this happen before? Three times. Really? Yeah, they reach the Super Bowl each time. That in, they won. in your lifetime? No. Oh. Once in my lifetime was the uh, <clears throat> 2004 season that you remember with the, the old Donovan McNabb leading the team, going forget? to the Super Bowl and then losing the other time in 1949 or something. Well, that was my lifetime. That was your life. That was uh, about midlife, <laughs> <laughs> midlife uh, crisis that the loss was in 49. But this year, it's uh, it's looking good. Good. Frank's loving it. He's just he's on board. Yeah. He's on board. I was just watching a video of bald eagles. You really forget how big they are. Yeah, I've seen them in like uh I want to say the zoo. Uh, have you? I well, think I also saw them somewhere else. Like, you know when you go someplace, maybe it was like the lighthouse or something. Yeah, they have like this giant cage, like a, not even a cage, it's like a it's like a caged room. Oh, uh, yeah. You're talking about? No. Um You but, don't? I think it's called like an aviary. It's a bird cage yeah it's outside it's kind of massive but like all the walls and the lid are made out of fencing material oh uh, okay but i've seen one person flying really yeah um mm. i was in the poconos pennsylvania poconos at a cabin house and i was down by the lake and i forget i was with a, a friend who was an avid bird watcher and he was talking about He's really lucky with birds. He always right. sees like and he was talking about some bird I've never heard of, and I'm like, right. I don't care. And as he was talking about that, a bald eagle flies by, and he had just said, "I am lucky yeah. that I get to really." It was the first bald eagle ever. I didn't. I had to Google because I, I saw it with my own eyes. I didn't believe it. Right, you're like it looks like, and I'm like they're not even in Pennsylvania. They're in like what, like I don't know, Arkansas, Minnesota, heaven, and I, heaven, um, Washington D.C. <laughs> <laughs> and um i looked it up and yeah there's bald eagles in pennsylvania but yeah so i just saw a video of one that like someone was like feeding them eggs it's so mad like if a bald eagle landed right in front of me i am more scared than i am if a i don't know a bobcat get out of here bobcats are small but they could still uh, I, you could break his little feathers off no that Run into a bald eagle. Really? And you see their, 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 their hooked beak and their talons. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, no, like what would you do? If a bald eagle is in front of me, and I'm, you have to know their size to agree with what I'm saying. Here's the thing. The only reason you wouldn't be as intimidated as a bobcat is because you can imagine, get out of here. Shoo. You'd imagine the bald eagle would fly before the bobcat. Just because he wanted to, not because he was afraid of it. Yeah, because... If I had to choose between fighting off a bobcat and fighting off a bald eagle, I think I'm choosing bobcat. Because he also has those talons. Yeah, like a bobcat, I can like imagine I can like handle and throw. You're not throwing a bald eagle if he gets those talons in you. Well, the good yeah, I don't I don't want to encounter either one. Well, I pulled up today, and there's a hawk on the neighbor's lawn. Yeah, standing on his prey. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, uh huh? We're down one dog. <laughs> No, what do you mean, aha? Uh -huh? you, have you seen it? No, I mean, not really, but... Okay, so the, where we live, hawks circle all the time. Yeah. In the in the sky, high above. High above. But... In the heavens. Uh, this... Because, this, you know, a lot of birds where we live. We actually live in a... Bird... <laughs> bird place. Bird bath. No, we're, we're in a... We're in yeah. Because uh, I remember... Right, there's signs. You, no, say, remember uh, a few months ago, might have been over summer, all the zoos were hiding their birds. Yes. Because there was a, like a, a minor bird flu going right. around. Right. And then they were saying all, it was like down the East Coast, but the zoos that were hiding their birds mm -hmm. were in a path of bird. Like, it's like, this is like, 
Like, you know, like an term? airway. This okay. is like the bird, the bird airway. Okay. And so any bird and anything over that, there's like birds are flying through. It's like a, you know, like a boat. Yeah, channel. A, uh, what's a, uh, yeah. What, what are the boat paths called? A shipping channel. Uh, yeah, shipping lane. Shipping lane. No, lane. You're right. Yeah. It's a bird What's lane. It's a channel. I don't know. <laughs> this is a channel. This is a channel. Subscribe. Curtain Crow channel. <laughs> um, I thought you meant you're talking we're part of the transatlantic yeah, east coast. We are part of the transatlantic highway. east coast bird highway. I meant this neighborhood has signs around it and it says this is a Part of bird station. It's one of the. It's one of the like you know, railroad stations. No, no, not a bird station. It's like a um, oh god, the Audubon Society. Some like isn't that animals? Birds? Audubon is a highway in Germany. No, it's something else. We're. I'll find the sign. Yeah, but anyway, it. I would show you first of all. I was talking on an iPhone, so I wasn't. I couldn't video. When? When I saw the hawk. Okay. But I took a picture and it was. I have the. What do I have? Oh, bragging. 12? No. 13. Because I think your camera's better than mine. You have the iPhone 13. You sure? Yes. Pro. Um, right. <laughs> well, I'm not impressed with the camera. But anyway, my Android takes better. And so I took a video of the Hawk with my Android. Problem is, I can never share it with anybody because it doesn't transfer. No, it doesn't. So he was standing there and uh, I was like, what are you doing here? And I was trying what to see. <laughs> he wouldn't talk. And I'm trying to, uh, he, so I was trying to see what he was standing on. It was gray. So I'm like, are, are you a squirrel? Were you a squirrel? But uh, when he left, there's a lot of feathers on the ground. So it was a bird. And um, Oh, bird on bird action? Yeah. You sure it wasn't the hawk feathers? Birds kill birds. Did you know that? I I've do. seen that many times. I do. You see the small birds and that's yeah. when they, they'll gang, they'll, they'll like cluster together. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, I, I, because I had the picture of him, I looked it up and... Um, and I have to take this. You know, Bobby, you already knew that. Um, I looked up the. I could look up the coloring, like his feet and his yeah. chest and everything. That's how I found out he was a Cooper's hawk. Oh. And um, they're real sneaky. Mm, they sneaky fly nose. low. They do fly. They can fly high, but they're they're known for the coming down they, they hide in the trees and they come down and they come around you, you know, and, and get you and um then i saw an article and it was like if you if you have cooper's hawks in your backyard there will be blood <laughs> that they they're just real killers oh man but i was so mad because i was trying to video him and i was looking at him and stuff and as soon as i looked away for one second he flew away because i wanted to see when he got in the air because it's hard to see yeah what he was standing on but um yeah as soon as i because he was kind of biggish maybe like a crow maybe bigger than a crow oh that's small yeah. Oh, it was. I'm, I'm thinking like a, the typical hawks we say. No. Okay. No, no, no. That's why this. These. I don't know what the deal with these, but no, more like a crow size. And but I knew uh, he didn't look like a regular. Yeah. Um. He number one looks bigger than the birds I'm normally seeing, and number two, he was just standing because he. I think he. I think like when they tear them apart, they kind of like stand there for a little bit to like. Stop struggling. Stop. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also, I think it's a couple. Like one, they're catching their breath. Two, mm. especially in bird culture. In case you guys don't know, um, there's a lot of you did the work. Now let me. Oh yeah. And so I think it's a lot of like. Yeah. This is mine. You see it with that a lot. You'll see it with. Like, and where am I going to take it? Right. Yeah. Lines and stuff. It's you did the you did the work. Now it's like all right. Right. And anyone else? You got any brothers that are trying to avenge your name? <laughs> so <laughs> this is what I found out that I didn't. I don't, again, I might have known and forgot. Who cares? I didn't know it today. That birds of prey, usually the male bird is smaller than the female bird. And and the Cooper's hawk is one of those birds. Okay. Do they do the hunting? I guess. Or are they all solo? I don't know. No, the bald eagles. They mate for life. I said it in an earlier podcast. Are there other kinds of eagles? Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I just know that... There's seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> the sea, that's where it comes from. They were once a sea eagle. And now they're just a seagull. Oh. Um, no, yeah, in the earlier podcast, we were talking about bald eagles. Yeah, because we were saying, what kind of bird do you want to be? Oh. And I was saying a bald eagle because I'm like, I'm the top of the food chain. But oh, yeah. also, I don't think it was bird. I think it was anything. Yeah. Because I was like a zebra. You want to be like mm -hmm. a horse. And I'm like, you want to work for the rest of your life? 
Right. I said bald eagles are well respected in the country. They're preserved. Sometimes, you know, with apex predators, you are lonely, right? Because you live a a mean and and, and, and mountainous. A, life. Yeah, a life of always having to just fight, fight to stay on top. And I'm like, fight, fight, fight. The Eagles fight song. That's probably what it came from. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and I was like, and also I was like, I'm pretty sure it'd be nice because I'd have a wifey because I think they, they mate for life, which is true. Bald Eagles, they're lovers and fighters. I don't think there's any female um, bald eagles. There is. There's a, they mate for, oh, what do you think? They're, they're, how, how else would they mate? Eggs are hatched. No. They mate for life. They do this beautiful dance. I never saw a girl. Well, I don't think you'd be able to distinguish them. Somebody has to, probably. And I'm sure somebody could. <laughs> the zoo. But yeah, they do this mating dance where they, they you, you're sure you've seen it. I feel like a bald eagle would be above that. <laughs> well, that's what's so, above? I, I think that's why I chose it. And I didn't even know. I'm like, that's what's so great about it. Because it was them. a dancer? What? Because he's a dancer? Yeah. Well, yeah. Because it's like they, they're, they're tough. They're well-rounded. But yeah, they're tough and it's like, but usually with toughness, then you lack compassion. Yeah. But they do this mating dance where they, they attach claws. Ew. Oh, on, on each other's hands? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant on, on its like chest or that something. That wouldn't really be very lovery, would it? Uh, maybe for like 50 shades of eagle. Um, <laughs> and they, they spin to the ground in a violent dive. And unless they, I don't know, decide to be lovers or something. Yeah. They both crash into the ground and die. Isn't that romantic? You're kidding. No. Why would they kill themselves? <laughs> Have one. Is on a plane heading to a different continent? She's flying. She's flying like a bird. She's on. She's on a sky bird. She is. She's yeah. on a metal bird. Yeah. She's going over to England. Good for her. Um, and I'm glad that that a mother's love is trumping my eagle story. Yeah. She, okay. Because she doesn't have feathers, so it's a, I'm a little more. You know, if she was a bird, I wouldn't take her phone. Yeah, call. hopefully she doesn't do the 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 bald um, eagle mating dance right into the Atlantic. She better not at, do <laughs> anybody. All right, moving on, guys. It is Wednesday, and um, as much as I would like to continue talking about eagles, you're preoccupied. I'm not preoccupied. So I just want to say something. You said they're strong. They are, and then and they can dance. And they can dance, and they have friendship handholds. They're romantic. They're, they're also beautiful. They're also beautiful. I wanted to say that, but I was doing yeah, something. They're also beautiful. And that's the other nice thing is like, they're also, when nobody sees a bald eagle, and yeah, I said if it's in front of you, it's scared. Yeah. But it's always like, if you see a bear in the, in the wild, you're like, and bears are, are, are cute creatures, but you say, oh gosh, we yeah. need to get out of here. I see a bear. Right. I see death. The excitement seeing a bald eagle. Like, I really, I, I didn't think about it that no, much. No, it's so exciting. I didn't think about it that much when I chose that would be the animal that I want to be if I wasn't a human. Uh-huh. The more I think about it, the more I stand by that decision. Uh, yeah, it would it's, be amazing to be a bald eagle. It would be incredible. Well, guess where you can do it? Where? Metaverse. The metaverse. Oh, man. I could be a bald eagle in the metaverse. You could. That'd be pretty sweet. All right, guys. It is Wednesday. On Wednesday, we have a little segment called one word wednesday on one word wednesday we pick a word or we choose a word we don't know it's not like we're picking out a hat we choose a word with that word we just talk you know we just talk right. five <clears throat> we, minutes about yeah. bald eagles and we just do whatever for that word it's fun you know it's uh maybe maybe you can take notes on just how to have a conversation with people yes it's you know we're we're, we're in times that our screen time makes us less social right so this is a way to sort of remember, wait, you know when people like they go to all these classes, it's like, how do I talk to to someone? Yeah. Oh, how do I how do I just start a conversation? And you sort of think of of oh, this is an open line. Oh, maybe start with small topics. No, that's all that's all nonsense. That's all nonsense guru conversation gurus. You can talk about anything. But you're saying um even uh, people go to classes because they want to get out there and be social. Um, you know who has a hard time talking to each other? Um, husband and wife. Mm. Because uh, the work, y- you know, if they both have their jobs and, 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 yeah. and you get to, like, you want to be supportive and you want to hear, but like, I, I can't hear anymore about um, whatever it is the person's job is. Um, and then, so they're just like, yeah, I get it. I'm sick of it too. And then you go, if you have children 
or even pets. It's like on and on about the kids. And so like they, <laughs> this is great for them to do. No, because you you can branch out because this is what happens. You say, you sit, not even husband and wife. It could be um, cohabitors. Co- cohabitors. Because you go like this. Well, what's there to talk about? Like, yeah. we do everything together. You know my job. Yeah. And like, we don't want to be obsessed talking about our birds that we have in our aviary. Um, doing this, you don't even realize you had, you didn't even realize you had something to say about it. Yeah. And then it just comes out. So it's no, like, there's, I, I can't remember. There's like a movie or something. And it was like, it was like based on like old days. And he was like going to get married, but he was like nervous. And he was like, he's, he's like, but you like, you enjoy talking to her and stuff. And so give a thumbs up to Avalon. And having fun. And he's like, yeah, but like what happens when, we're, when we run out of things to talk about? Right. <laughs> it's like, well, he, it's like, well, eventually once we're there for a few years, didn't we talk about everything? No, All it's right. true. There used to be, I'm sorry. There used to be a, um, I don't know if it's still there. Did this go through? It has a blue arrow. I think I might've sent it twice. Um, there was someone who would take photos, which was kind of rude and intrusive, but it would t- take photos of couples at a dinner or whatever. And it would say like, like you could actually tell how long they were together uh, by how quiet they were. Uh-huh. So. But there's nothing wrong with that either. No, I mean, not at all. Enjoying each other's peace and company without having to feel forced to talk. Anyway, it's not just a, we're not just doing a, a, a trial of human speech. We also get something out of it. You know, this is a spiritual podcast and we love to bring a spiritual side to whatever we're talking about. And that's something that, you know, if we live in a, in a world that was created spiritually. Can you say that again, but in the um, the movie guy voice? What movie guy voice? This summer. Because you, you, you said we're in a world. In a world <laughs> created by spiritual forces. <laughs> Two men. And one woman. <laughs> and an eagle. And an eagle. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we, we bring a spiritual side to it, maybe bring the Bible up, because yeah, we live in a spiritual world cre- created by spiritual things, and so obviously everything can be used as a metaphor, you know, like, we see the parables in the Bible, anything can become a parable if you make it one. That's right. So let's just get into it. I mean, we, we've we've discussed now what One Word Wednesday is today more than we ever have in the today, years we've been is, doing it. Today, which is, um, it's sometime in December. Yeah, it's December 7th. Yep. Oh, yeah. December 7th. Pearl Harbor. <laughs> That's a date you remember? It's a day that will live in infamy. That's what is literally called. Like my whole life. The day that will live in infamy. I'm not saying like, like you would never forget Pearl Harbor, but people know as December 7th. Like are the flags of half mass? Uh, lit- it is literally like saying. like It's it, not. Don't compare it to that. It is. Really? Like saying, I'm saying 9-11, right? No, but it can't be because I would remember it then. Maybe in your time. What? I don't... Well, I don't... I'm not being insensitive. No, no, no. I'm saying, no, it wasn't in my time. No, that you that like you remembered and... No, like, okay. Like the, the average, I don't remember The it. average American remembers the date December 7th. I think the, pe- major, the people who have remembered Pearl Harbor are, are a lot have been... Are dead. No, I'm not saying remember... Like, <laughs> you know, like... When when you hear these 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 things of never, I had forget. to learn that it was a day that will live in infamy. I had and, to learn it. Yes, and, and I don't think they're teaching it anymore. Yeah, I don't know, but also like no, there weren't there weren't signs and stuff around town. Yeah. I never even went to any kind of like I don't think I would see anything on my Instagram. No, because they're not on Instagram. Who the people who would at, from that time like the people who know what I'm saying right now? No, I know, but I'm saying like I. I I don't think these never forget things are all based around um, actually physically remembering. I think there's an idea of let the generations after you remember this day. I don't think the generations. Yeah. After. I don't know. It was before me. I mean, my, uh, you know, my, I don't know about my, 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 my aunt. I remember telling me about it. I mean, my, my dad, whatever. But anyway, uh, and he, she was even older than he was. But um, it's just like, it's just one of those things. Like, it's called a day that'll live in infamy. I don't okay, know. Okay, we'll never forget Pearl Harbor. You know, obviously, a terrible attack on U.S. soil. Um, and of course, 9-11 completely outnumbered it and everything like that. But I'm just saying, it was until until 9-11, it was very monumental of like, oh my gosh, the loss of American life. Yeah, well, I mean, remember it all. Let's remember it all. Um, we talk about banana day. So yeah, let's talk about Pearl Harbor day, but let's get into the word because we are running out of time. Okay. 
What is the word? It, it's it's gentleman's choice. What? <laughs> You don't have a word? It's gentleman's choice today. You really don't have a word? I really don't have a word. I'm sorry. I Last week, I didn't have a name. Today, I had a name, and I can, I'm can. i trying. Well, I mean, uh, My your, daughter's on I was a about plane. To say, I was about to say. In your defense, your daughter is, to, literally as we speak, is over the Atlantic. Headed, With some man I don't know. A man? The pilot. Well, that's sexist. I'm sorry. I was about to say. I'm sorry. I'm glad you said it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To... With, with some person that i don't know two people i'm hoping two people, yeah. yeah i think that's standard <laughs> two people you don't know actually well i imagine it'd be a lot more than that for everyone on the flight a lot more pilots a lot more just like regular like humans uh she's with a lot of humans you no know. but i meant it, she's in, in his control. hands i don't even want to think about that and they say well, let's not hope she's in his hands <laughs> no he's not paying attention to the road no everyone would be mad about that yeah. on, the, the, on the flight yeah. okay Brr-ing. what's the word i know that you're just gonna say one that's gonna be so great um, but do we talk about? Ah, oh, man, you really put me on the spot. I would like you could have just said like five minutes before. Let's just like, like I'm trying to think of something. <laughs> so obviously, all all this podcast, you have been talking about um, her, my sister who's on a trip. Yeah, it's true. International. This is her first international solo trip. Solo, not yep. solo well, with our with our friend Sierra. Not with family or yeah. under the parental. But with with our friend Sierra, who can and they're both capable and trusted. But so I'm thinking of a word that has to do with that. We can do flight. We can do vacation. Oh. We can do anxiety. Um, <laughs> I like flight. Flight? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we talked about, you know what? We, I feel like there's always sort of a weird connection between our unscripted early talk. Yeah. Our pre, our pre um, day of the week talk. Yeah. And then what we finally talk about, we've been talking about hawks and birds. Oh, yeah. So we're going to talk about flight. Perfect. We planned it. We it's planned all it. come together like we had in post in pre pre planning meeting. So yeah, so, so she's flying, traveling. Birds fly and travel. Um, bald eagles. I'm um, spitballing. One word that comes to mind: freedom. Freedom, of course. Freedom. The bald eagle represents freedom. Yeah. Um, something about flying when you know the Wright brothers created it. There was a sense of freedom by not being locked. To your own land anymore yes well as a matter of fact when i was driving um these ladies to the airport um i said your grandmother took a very difficult ship ride across <laughs> the sea <laughs> to get away to get away from there the and here you are flying back in six six uh, it's under seven hours yeah which was not how long the ship took and uh, how amazing yeah yeah no there's absolutely a, a, a sense of, of freedom to it and I mean, right off the gate, um, I w- want to compare it to spirituality yeah. somewhat. Well, I mean, birds are very in art. Yeah. Well, the dove. Like, yeah. so let's look at the dove. Yeah. In um, Noah's Ark, you or you had the ship that you know survived the great flood, and they're still sort of stuck. Yeah. Not knowing, wondering. And only, yeah, saved but stuck. You know, o- you don't only really this think bird that. with flight was able to go because they're not attached to the boat with their, right. with their legs and gravity. Right. Are able to go and find an olive branch to bring right. it back. And so in spirituality, like it's sort of this comparison of our earthly selves, right? Our literally definition of earth and our spiritual selves are flying and are able to, to see above what we're stuck in. And I just find it a lot in, in like spiritual or like in earthly ignorance, right? Like I, it can be very easily compared to our personal view. Mm. And then like you're, you're, at, you're a small little town in a, in a, in a country. It's like, if only you knew what was out there. Right. But you're stuck and you're like, everything around me is what the world is. Right. It's why people think the world is flat. It's because right. it's like. It's flat here. <laughs> well, yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's flat here. It's flat everywhere. Um, and so I think there's this like sense of, of flight being compared to just spirituality of like elevating yourself to be able to travel. Right. Spiritually. Yeah. And it's funny that flight is, is such an action word of moving through the air, but it's a flight. Like she's on flight. Yeah. You know, whatever number. Um, and I don't know how planes work. I, did. I took a I took a physics of flight class. Okay, well I didn't, and so it reminds me of spirituality because 
I just because I don't, you know, I'm not going to rely on my own understanding. Like, mm. yeah, I don't think that can work. I yeah. don't think you're going to be able to, you know, it's like, I don't understand it, but it's obviously, yeah, it's someone's full-time job to keep getting up in the, in that metal, you know, thing and flying. And so, um, it's like whenever you can, because people always say like, can you see oxygen? You know, it, it, and it's like kind of like, you know, it's just something people say, but it does, it is helpful. Like, you know, when you, um, when you're trying to understand believing in things that you don't understand. Yeah. Um, and just as you're, you're leaning not on your own understanding, something I'm thinking of is sort of, um, bird's eye view. Yeah. And so I'm thinking of like the path of life, you know, like we have free choice, but you know, God, you know, also has like a path for us and it bends and it weaves and stuff, but, but God sort of has this bird, bird's eye view and like, imagine right. looking down on a path and like you see someone and they're like, they're going and they might like reverse, but it's like, you see the entire path before them. And so I kind of see like that as like sort of the, the free, have free will, you know, right. it's like, well, how can we have free will? But God knows everything. It's, well, he has a bird's eye view. He's looking at it. And it's like, he can set up like an easier path to your bird's eye view. You don't have to take it. Right. You can just keep like bobbing back and forth. And, um, you know, like the saying, like, as the crow flies. Right. It's yeah. Like, the distance between two points. Yeah. Like your goal, yeah. your goal sometimes is right there and God sees it. Right. It could be so close. Right. As the crow flies. Right. And then what's, how do we travel? Not as a crow fly. We, we travel as far as what's in front of us. Right. And sometimes we get frustrated of like, oh, I feel like it's right there. And it's like, yeah, but you know, we're on earth to not, not be, yeah. It's like, as like. You might have to go this way, right. not because you're going backwards in your in your path, your life path, but because you're not flying just yet. Right. And nobody nobody says that when they're driving, and they're like, you know, one of the bridges in our town closed, and I spend a lot of time mm. right on the other side of it. A lot of the, the social things I do. And imagine if equally I, I got so mad of like, but it, it's so close. Yeah. It's like, or if I turn right, it's like. Well, I'm going. I'm going the wrong way. Like I, I'm, I'm messing up. Right. I'm messing up my, my, my travel right. to where I'm going. It's like you're not messing up. It's like there's an obstacle in front of you. I love finding different ways. And yeah, and, and you find in a different way. And um, then obviously, you know, if you just want to think of like your spiritual self, it, it, like the whole goal is to get that view, yeah. right? Like, mm-hmm. so even if. We are on earthly lives, but elevating ourselves spiritually right. with our path kind of just gives us not that we never, whenever we'll travel as the crow flies. Right. Right. Like that's not what we can do on earth because we're not being crows. But I think definitely working on your spirituality can help give a bird's eye view of the path in front of right. you to just understand the better way to go or the thing right. to do. It's like the less we work on our spirituality, it's all good. We always say that. Right. Like, you don't become spiritual when you start living a spiritual life we're all spiritual beings right with with the power of flight and so then the argument would be well then what's the benefit i'm just gonna live my life if i'm just as spiritual as the person who is devoting themselves you can you can but yeah I, but uh, and that's what i'm saying it's so then the benefit is you get that bird's eye view and right. you're less phased by the obstacle in front of you because mm-hmm. you're like i see the bigger <clears throat> picture yeah we're, we're so lucky um that in our time recreational um camera drones yeah came out you know and you and they're affordable yeah uh relative you know but um it's so different when you see because before you might see like a helicopter shot or something mm-hmm. it was kind of rare but now you can get a bird's eye view as you say with these drones that take flight and just to see your own neighborhood or to see whatever it's like it's such a different literally a bird's eye view you yeah. hear it a lot but you're like this is how birds see see everything and um, just one more thing I want to say about the flight, I, you know, you said we're spiritual beings and, and, and yeah, like that means you can fly. And so nothing can hold your spirit down. Um, nothing, not imprisonment, not, you know, and it's, it's you hear uh, in the old days, I guess. I don't know if it ever happened, but it's a saying. Th- this person was so bad. Not only he was buried under the prison. Yeah. Like, yeah, bury him under the prison. He's going to be in prison. And then once he dies, he's going to be under spirit still flew. Yeah. took flight and yeah. and flew up to you know god yeah yeah you can't you can't like that's that's sort of like the the beauty of, of flight right it's like it's literally like you're free right yeah like, and um they always they, they say it uh, about like hope and stuff like kind right. of hope 
and flight, like in like the worst times, is like you can't diminish hope or love. And yeah. it's like it's always you can just like imagine it as this like flying. It's nothing is maybe it's like with feathers. Hope is a thing with feathers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, check out that poem. <laughs> but yeah, so there's there's a beauty in flight and then I'm sure if someone did their research we could find a bunch of fly, flight or birds or, or freedom. Yeah, and we, you know, you mentioned the Wright Bible. brothers, but you have to mention our neighbors, which is Mr. Pitcairn. Yeah, yeah, John Pitcairn and all the, we oh, went no, to Harold the, Pitcairn. Remember we went to the flight museum right yeah. there? Mm-hmm. We'll be back tomorrow for Walk Through Thursday. Until then, go and spread your wings and fly like an eagle. Fly like, like an eagle. eagle. I want to. To the seagull. Fly Peace. like an eagle. <laughs> I'm a crap.